Senator Coyle. Honorable Senators, I rise today to add my voice in support of Bill C-91, an act respecting Indigenous languages. I want to thank my colleague, Senator Sinclair, for introducing this important bill in such an informative, eloquent, and compelling manner as only he can. And also thank you to Senator Gagné for your interventions. As some of you know, my early studies were in linguistics and in the field of modern languages. I have also lived and worked in languages other than my own. Setswana in Botswana, Bahasa Indonesia in Indonesia. When we are immersed in another culture and language, we come to understand the people and how they see the world. I am proud to live in the territory known as Mi'kma'ki, the land of our colleagues, Senators Christmas and Senator Francis. And I am honored to be a member of the Aboriginal Peoples Committee, which completed the pre-study on Bill C-91. And like Senator Patterson, I'm honored to be a member of the Arctic Committee. <clears throat> in my remarks, I will touch briefly on the international, mention a beautiful <clears throat> local Nova Scotian example, and finish with drawing all of our attention to the unique situation of the Inuit in Canada. As Senator Sinclair mentioned, this bill is timely for many reasons. It is coming to us in the International Year of Indigenous Languages, and it is urgent. The International Year of Indigenous Languages aims to focus attention on the risks, and these are serious risks, confronting Indigenous languages, especially those significant for development, reconciliation, good governance, and for peace building. Award-winning Kenyan writer Ngugi Watiango said, language is a carrier of culture. Culture is a carrier of people's values. Values are carriers of people's outlook or conscience and sense of identity. Through language, we can deduce the personality and the general perspective of the people. Language portrays people's identity. identity. Therefore, to be without language is to be lost." End of quote. Like the Indigenous peoples of Canada, Kenyans have seen languages lost or threatened due to the long and deep effects of harsh colonization. During the course of our pre-study of Bill C-91, we heard that the vitality of Indigenous languages varies across Canada. We heard of tragic losses of language, and we heard of many innovative, valiant, and highly effective efforts of Indigenous peoples across Canada to reclaim, revitalize, promote, and protect their precious and sacred languages. In my own backyard, Mi'kmaq Kinamatanewe, how'd I do? <laughs> or MK, is an organization that protects and promotes the educational, and Mi'kmaq language rights of the Mi'kmaq people. Earlier this week, I was thrilled to see on my Facebook feed that Public Radio International, PRI, broadcasts the story of 16-year-old Eskasoni First Nation resident Emma Stevens singing the Beatles song Blackbird in Mi'kmaq, Buliskewicz. Yeah. Did you hear it? Yes. Emma recorded the song as part of her school's effort to celebrate the UN year of indigenous languages. She says in the interview with PRI that the lyrics, take these broken wings and learn to fly, resonate with her. She has seen her language slowly diminishing, but singing this song in Mi'kmaq inspires her to learn her language and to show non-Mi'kmaq people the beauty of that language. It is said that Paul McCartney wrote Blackbird about the civil rights movement in the US. People in Eskasoni draw parallels with their own oppression and struggle, and also parallels with their strength and pride. I highly recommend you listen to the beautifully sung Mi'kmaq language song. Just Google Blackbird and Emma Stevens, and you are in for a treat. With an estimated 10,000 Mi'kmaq people in eastern Canada and the northeastern US, it is critical to keep the Mi'kmaq language alive. It is also important and enriching for us the neighbors of the Mi'kmaq people. I would now like to bring to your attention the voices of some of the people we heard from, not 
at our Aboriginal Peoples Committee, but in our Arctic Committee. Our Arctic Committee has been working on a study which looks at the rapid changes in the Arctic and its effects on the people and the land. Mr. Erik Sivertsen, representing the, country of Nor the county sorry, of Nordland in the Norwegian Parliament said, and I quote, we create and understand our world through the language we use. And therefore, the language is the most important part of preserving or developing the culture of a people. If you don't have your own language, your culture cannot survive. This must be one of the main tasks to support Indigenous people with small and threatened languages to help them preserve and to develop their language in the modern world. Aluki Kotiak, president of Nunavut Tungavik Incorporated, was also clear in her presentation to our Arctic Committee. A champion, a fierce champion of the Inuit language, she said, and she taught us a lot about some of our historical commitments here, and it's important to, to listen to what has happened since Nunavut was created. She said, I am here from Nunavut, the only jurisdiction in Canada where the indigenous population is the majority. Spread over 25 communities, all fly-in communities, Inuit make up 85% of the population. Roughly half of the Inuit are under the age of 25. The first language of the majority of Inuit in Nunavut is still Inuktitut. Both French and English are minority languages. She continued, I am sure that you're all very well versed on the legacy of colonialism and residential schools. And we heard our colleagues speak of this. You are aware of the concerted efforts through assimilation policies that tried to strip us away from our language and our culture. Part of the reason why Inuit worked so tirelessly to settle the Nunavut Agreement was so that as Inuit, we could continue to assert our self-determination and we could continue to have our Inuit culture and language thrive. But when we entered into our Nunavut Agreement with Canada, we had a healthy Inuktut language. Our language is dying at 1% per year. On July 14, 1998, then fi Finance Minister Paul Martin and his officials informed a federally appointed interim commissioner for Nunavut that Inuit would not receive federal funding for Inuktut as the working language of the territorial government. Instead, it was stated that Inuktut would be addressed at a later date. Okay, so the promise of it being addressed at a later date. In 2001, the first data set was gathered after Canada decided to postpone funding for Inuktut for government services in Nunavut. At that time, 85% of Inuit in Nunavut still declared Inuktitut as their mother language, but more importantly, 68% of Inuit said it was still the main language used in their homes. This despite the efforts that were made to make people speak English. As of 2016, so 15 years later, these numbers have dropped by 20%. Mother tongue Inuktut is now 63%. Home language Inuktut is 49.7%. 20 years since the Liberal government at the time said they would address Inuktut as the working language of our government at a later date, and 20% of our language is gone. This is significant. According to Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedom, all Canadians are entitled to essential public services at a, of a reasonable, a reasonable quality. Inuit, Ms. Cotier continues, are not receiving essential services of a reasonable quality because they are not being delivered in Inuktut. Inuit lives should not be put at risk because they are not able to receive appropriate health services, for example, in Inuktut. She continues, the federal government has committed to developing an Indigenous language legislation. This bill we are here discussing today. This is a good initiative. In Nunavut, Inuktut is already recognized as an official language territorially. What we need is for the federal government to recognize that Inuktut is an official founding language of the Nunavut territory. Maybe only then would Nunavut Inuit be able to reasonably expect quality essential services delivered in Nunavut. End of quote. Okay, then I go on to just two more, two more uh, people who, I and mean, I'm using their voices because they are powerful and they should be amplified in this chamber. 
The president of Inuit Tepiret Kanatami, Natan Obed, also addressed our committee on this bill. On the First Nations Inuit and Métis Languages Act, we've worked with this government from its inception on the ambitious, uh, ambition rather, of an Indigenous Languages Bill. The level of ambition was something that was basically unfettered until recently. We had hoped to have an official language status for Inuktut in Inuit Nunangat, and we still hope for that. We hope to have service delivery rights in relation to Inuktut in league with the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and its implementation in this country and the rights we have as Indigenous Peoples globally beyond that declaration." End of quote. It is appropriate, colleagues, that today we have both C, Bill C-91, the Indigenous Languages Legislation, and Bill C-262, an act to ensure the laws of Canada are in harmony with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And the final voice that I will amplify here is that of Paul Kwasa, Premier of Nunavut. Mr. Kwasa said, the lives of the Inuit are forever changed by the policies and programs that took Inuit from their homes, denying them their language and culture, placing them in unfamiliar lands and communities, and separating them from a way of life they had always known. Many of us lost our language, our culture, our traditions, which is, of course, our identity. Many struggled with trying to reconcile the ways of the past and their present. Many turned to alcohol and drugs, to violence or suicide, and have been profoundly impacted by these actions. And many today are still struggling in these ways. Reclaiming our Inuit language, culture, and agency is necessary to right these historical wrongs." End of quote. Colleagues, Mr. Kwasa speaks of that imperative of reclaiming Inuit language, culture, and agencies. These three items are inextricably connected. Bill C-91 is about Indigenous languages, and it is about so much more. Mr. Kwasa speaks of agency. Ms. Kotiark and others speak of self-determination. For a person to have agency means they will have the will, the power, and the capacity to act. We have heard loudly and clearly from these committed Inuit leaders and from their First Nations and Métis counterparts that their languages are essential to having the capacity to lead and develop the strong, healthy, and proud societies and communities they want and of which they were deprived for far too long. Honourable Senators, I hope we can send Bill C-91 to committee soon so we can ensure that this historically significant piece of legislation can be given the consideration it deserves. Thank you. Merci.